it's the most widely used and abused performance enhancing drug from today and it was for a while actually even from like the 90s and 80s you know before i started bodybuilding which i didn't start bodybuilding until 93 actually and then 94 i did my my very first show and a lot of women do actually use this ped due to no androgenic properties to it and that drug is clenbuterol so clenbuterol was patented in 1967 and didn't come on to the market or wasn't available to come on to the market until 1977 as a bronchial stimulator and dilator for for asthma patients but unfortunately it never really got to hit the market due to the side effects that clenbuterol actually entailed to to people using it so they actually made it for veterinary use for horses only in 1998 they came out with the liquid syrup version of clenbuterol due to the fact that they try to use it for cattle for veterinary use. And these beefed up cattle were sold to humans consumption to use, you know, as far as eating the cattle. And they came back with side effects. So uh, that aspect, they had to pull off clenbuterol off the market uh, completely for just horses only because people don't normally eat horses. They eat cattle, they eat beef. So yeah, clenbuterol was never approved in the United States, but it was approved in Europe, some European countries, and Mexico. Back in the day when we used clenbuterol, when I used it, we got the Oxyflux clenbuterol, that's what it was called, Oxyflux, and it was the Mexican version of clenbuterol that was uh, available for us, you know. Uh, it had the little white bottle and the picture of the little lungs showing that it was a bronchial simulator for, for, for asthma medication. But it was as a medication for horses, not really approved for human consumption. So in the U.S., you know, it was never classified as a controlled drug. Therefore, it was never banned. You can't ban something that was never controlled, right? That was never legal legalized in the United States to begin with. But it is banned and always was banned in the IOC, or the International Olympic Committee, in all drug testing events. They actually drug tested for clenbuterol use, and you would get DQ'd right away, disqualified and would probably never be able to compete again. So let's go on to some of the pharmacology and molecular structure of clenbuterol. It's a beta-2 adrenergic, and it's a bronchial stimulator dilator, basically. And it's similar to uh, epinephrine and adrenaline, as far as the chemical structure goes. Similar, identical, but not exactly the same. And how it acts like a bronchial, bronchial stimulator, it acts on the bronchial tract, or the smooth muscles of the bronchial tract. So it basically opens up the blood vessel dilation in the bronchial tract in the lungs, which helps open up for aerobic capacity, which helps for burning body fat. So that's kind of how it's used in the body. And it's got two basic, basic functions, you know, with clenbuterol. The first function of clenbuterol is that it works on the CNS, the central nervous system, as a thermogenic. So it works on systemic thermogenesis of the, of the body, so it regulates the body temperature, the body core. So it raises your blood temperature or your body temperature slightly. So you're constantly burning calories due to that raise of temperature and metabolic rate. The second thing it does is it hits a beta-3 receptor slightly. Even though it's not really classified as a beta-3 receptor agonist, it's a beta-2 agonist. But it does slightly hit the beta-3 receptors, which happens to be the stimulation of adipose body fat tissue or lipolysis in the body, which uses body fat for energy. So it works on those two conversions. Like I said, beta-3 receptors, activation, and the CNS, the central nervous system, as far as metabolic rate and temperature body core of the human body. Clenbuterol is also known to have some slight anabolic properties in the body. And by anabolism, it, there's some anecdotal studies and data. This is not really proven, but there is some studies and some data that relates to this. Dan Duchesne was trying to implicate some of these uh, these theoretical data studies on, on humans, but it was never really, never really fortified or brought forward. In, in other words, it wasn't completed as far as data goes. But some of the data that Duchesne studies found that it relates to the DNA conversion of muscle fibers from type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers and enhances them slightly and makes them more dense. It has contributing factors of density and strengthening of muscle type 2 and type 1 muscle fibers. So that DNA 
fluctuation transfer pushing forward of the fiber cells in the muscles, that created some kind of anabolic property or anabolism of hypertrophy to those muscle cells. So like I said, it's all in studies though. It's kind of in theory, um, some of it's actual. I believe that it's true. I remember when I took Clen for the first time back in the late 90s, from body fat testing, I actually put on muscle and lost body fat because my weight didn't change, even though my body fat dropped and I got leaner. I competed as a middleweight, oh, you know, back when I first took Clen. This was 1998. And I remember my body fat dropping. I started seeing veins in my abs, cross striations in my quads, striations in my glutes. And I was still 185, 190 pounds. And I was like, what the fuck? You know, I'm like getting leaner. I'm not on drugs as far as anabolics or androgen goes, but I am taking Clen for the first time. My body reacted. It actually strengthened definitely some of my, you know, some of my muscle fiber cells by an increasing volume of hypertrophy because how do you get leaner and harder looking, not drop weight? You're, 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 you have more contractile muscle for some odd reason. You're stronger in the gym, but you're not on any pro hormone. You're not on a SARM. You're not on an androgen. You're not on anabolic. You're only taking clenbuterol. Well, that's the only study there is, right? That's the only thing you can go off of since that's the only thing you're taking simultaneously along with your program. So it worked for me. Now, genetic translation, genetic disposition, how my body accepted clenbuterol versus somebody else, it's, it's all different for everybody, right? But that's just how I reacted with it, and this is what happened with me. So it was my genetic translation of that PED or of that clenbuterol at that time when I was 23 years old and back in 1998. So that's all I can kind of go off of, you know. Now I'll go on to some of the side effects of clenbuterol, possible side effects. Now, even though on paper it doesn't affect beta-1 receptors, more of a beta-2 agonist, right? So beta-2 is signaling for, you know, for, for body fat reduction, aerobic capacity, and all those kinds of things that we were talking about and mentioning, or that I was mentioning earlier in this video. Beta-1 has to do with your heart rate increasing. It kind of primarily rates to heart rate capacity, genetic predisposition on how people accept different adrenaline or adrenal gland-related types of things like caffeine, ephedrine, which is also a beta-1, beta-2, beta-3 agonist and kind of hits all beta receptors, right? Clen being, or clenbuterol being more beta-2 related. There could be some agonist to the uh, to the beta-1 receptor in certain individuals because it does have some properties of that. Uh, beta-3 meaning for body fat or using the lipolysis or body fat for energy. So in some cases, people are getting that heart rate or higher heart rate symptom. Some people get nausea cramping in a lot of individuals, anxiety, really, really rare cases. Um, I haven't personally seen this, but you, you can create AFib in your heart, which is really not a good thing. You don't want AFib. But we're talking about somebody with probably a, a genetic birth defect in their heart or predisposition for having um, some kind of, you know, negative symptoms for their heart to begin with that could have AFib properties taking clenbuterol. It's probably not a smart thing. You know, so if you have heart condition or heart issues, and again, I'm not a doctor, this is not medical advice or anything like that. I don't, I'm not condoning anybody to take clenbuterol. So please, this is not what this video is about. It's for educational purposes only. Um, I would never have anybody in their right mind take uh, any kind of stimulant or fat burner if they have a heart predisposition of some kind of heart issue, you know, or really fucked up blood work, you know, whatever that is. Don't, don't take any kind of PE. Ever, you know what I'm saying? Until you get your blood work correct. And again, like I said, I'm not advocating this. I'm not uh, a medical doctor. I'm not advising anything. Well, so these side effects can occur if you do stupid things or take, you know, 100 mcgs of clin all at once when you should be titrating up from 20 mcgs at a time. 20, work your way up to maybe 40, then work your way up to 60. N nobody needs 120 or 180 mcgs or 200 mcgs of clenbuterol when I took it. And back in the day, there was only 20 MCG micro, you know, MCG tablets available. Um, there was no liquid plan. That shit came out later, which that's like fucking cracking a bottle. Don't don't take that because you can't dose it correctly. But I know, like nowadays, you, you even have 40 MCG clean tabs, and you have to break them in half. But anyways, long story short, be careful of your dosage. Don't take too much. Definitely don't take any clenbuterol if you have a genetic predisposition of a bad heart or AFib properties, like I said, um, it's really, really a bad idea. 
so be careful. But again, I'm not a medical doctor. This is for educational purposes only. Be really careful. Be safe. Be aware of what you're doing. Like I said, make sure you got blood panels done. Make sure you get your blood work done. Your health markers checked before you start any kind of program through fitness or whatever it is, especially PED use. Be really careful. But take care. Have a great, fantastic day. Please leave comments in the comment session and talk to you soon. All right, have a good day. Bye-bye.